In this program, we're going to learn how to use radio buttons and check boxes inside group boxes. Got several pictures of dogs here, basically using Microsoft Paint and the paint bucket to change the images of these dogs. You can see them listed in the resources. It's pretty much the same dog with a different bucket of paint spilled on it, which is not a good way to paint your dog. So we're going to first now get a group box that's going to hold radio buttons. So I'll double click on group box. Use that upper left hand corner to drag it where I need to go and resize it. The three letter prefix for a group box is GRP. So I'll go with the lowercase GRP and in this group box we're going to have the users or the dog, whatever's using it, choose a color for the dog. So I'll call it GRP choose color. You can use whatever you want, just start with GRP. We can change lots of properties for a group box. Here I'll change the font size. We can also change the foreground color. I'll make this maybe maroon. Whatever you want to do. And then the text property will change that caption at the top. And I'm going to give the users or the dogs some instructions to choose a color so they'll know what they're supposed to do. Now it's time to add some radio buttons. I know I've got six other pictures, so right now I'll add six radio buttons. Actually, I'm going to add just one. Notice when I slide it in to the group box, it takes the properties of the group box. The font size and foreground color have switched to the group box defaults, but you can change them again here. RAD is the three letter prefix for a radio button, and I'm calling this one RAD Blue. The text is going to be blue, and it's going to lead us to eventually see a picture of a blue dog. If you want to change the size of the text, again, you can do that with a font. You can change the color of it. Maybe you want the color of it to be blue. Lots of things that you can do. And as I said, we know we've got six pictures all together, so I'm going to copy and paste this so I have six radio buttons and then I'm going to change all of their names and their text properties to reflect all the colors we have. I'm doing this pretty quickly, so you may want to pause the video and do it yourself. I'm changing this one to rad green, and I'll change its text to say green. And then I'm going to very quickly take care of all the rest of them because I paused the video. You might want to do that too. So they're all set now. But it occurs to me I've actually got one more image to take care of, and that's the blank image of the dog. So there's really seven images all together. So I'm going to put another radio button here using copy and paste. You could also go back to the toolbox and get one. I'll call this RAD blank. And the text will be blank. Um, some students call this white or empty or whatever you want to call it. When we run this program, there were no radio buttons selected. Now there's one, no more than one. There's either zero or one, never more than one radio button in the same group box is selected. So these are great when you only want one option selected. Now I'm going to go to the blank option and change its checked property to true because when the program starts, it really is the one that's selected. If you think about it, that's the dog you see. And then click the other ones and notice that when I choose them, only one radio button can be checked at a time. No more than one. All right, let's write some code to change the picture. Well, that deals with the colors of the dog. So if, I'll start with the blue one, if radblue.checked double equals true, that means it's equivalent to true, then I want the picture box to have in the image properties.resources, the blue dog, dog blue, that's the one. Let's see if this works out. If I pick the blue radio button and then change the picture, that's what we get, the blue dog. I'm going to put a little code here to documentation so I know where things are ending. While I'm doing that, I'm going to mention that when we have these radio buttons, a lot of times else if is the best way to go through them because only one of them can be true. So if I use if, else if, else if, if only one thing can be true, that's probably what we want. If more than one thing can be true, which is going to be the situation with checkboxes, you might need to use a lot of separate ifs instead of else if. Now, I didn't put double equals true or equivalent to true this because I don't have to have that when it's just a true false thing with this dot check property. So I decided to leave it out. That's up to you. And there's a lot of copying and pasting I can do just switching things up. 
We'll check it out here with the blue dog and the green dog. I'll check blue. There it is. I'll check green. There it is. That's pretty much what we need to do for all of these and some else ifs. So if you want to pause the video, you'll notice that I did and took care of a bunch of them in a hurry coming up. There they are. I got else if all these other things because only one of them can be true at a time. I did end with an else. You could end with an else if on the blank one or just with an else. It's the only one that's left. So I ended with an else. And now all these dogs work. Hopefully yours do also. Again, with radio buttons, no more than one button can be checked true at a time in the same group box. That's what radio buttons are great to use for. Now we can also make something happen when users click on these. I wish the click event was a default when we double click on this in the design. It's not. Later on in the course, I'll show you how we can get to that. The check changed event is what you get. So if we double click on this blue radio button, we get the check changed event. That means whenever the check property is changed, this will run. So I'll throw a message box in here so you can see what happens. I'm going pretty fast on this. So if you want to pause the video, you can do that. The idea is just to get a message here that can pop up. So let's check it out. The blue button is currently false. When I check it, now it's true. That's a check changed event. So the message came up. If I now click on purple, the blue just changed from true to false. That's a check changed event also. You might have to pause to think about that. Going from false to true or true to false, those are both check changed events. So if you only want this to happen when the radio buttons check property becomes true, then we're going to have to use an if here to make sure that it, that's the case. So if rad blue dot check is true, that's when we want the message box to show up. And this could be whether users click on it to make it true or if somewhere in the code you force that button, to, it's check property to be true, that radio button, I should say. So now uh, it became true, the check property, now the check property is false, so no message box popped up. So again, radio buttons are great when we want no more than one thing selected. But if we can have more than one thing selected, we're going to be looking at check boxes. First, we're going to get another group box. I'll put it below the first one. And in this one, I'm going to list a lot of activities for the dog to do during the day. So I'll call it GRP things to do. And I'll change the tech, text that it's activities for the dog. Once again, I can change the font size and the font color. Feel free to pause the video and mess around with some of these properties. And I'm going to start thinking of things that the dog can do. Well, I've got some ideas and I'm going to use a checkbox. So I'm going to go get a checkbox, not a checklist box, a checkbox. I'll slide it into my group box down here. Once again, it inherits several of the properties of the group box. CHK is going to be the three letter prefix. And of course, a lot of properties we can change. This first one's going to deal with the dog going for a walk. So I'll call it CHK walk. And I'll have some text to reflect that. You can make up whatever activities you want. So here the dog's going to take a walk. And I'm going to put three more activities in here. I recommend you get four activities at least all together. More if you're really ambitious. Maybe your dog's high energy. So I'm going to copy and paste that. You'll notice it's going to happen very quickly. So pause the video if you like. I'm going to have the dog chew up a shoe, go for a ride, bark at the neighbors, and take a walk. Let's run the program. And notice that we can check several of these and have more than one true. That's what checkboxes can do. So we can have all of them, none of them, whatever true. For radio buttons, no more than one can be true in the same group box. But we need checkboxes for these activities because the dog could do all of them. In fact, I'm going to make an if 
statement here to figure out if the dog has accomplished all these activities for the day. So if CHK, oh, uh, well, we got to hit all four of them. I'll start with CHK walk dot check. I could say double equals true, but I'm going to leave it out. And I've got to do that for all of them. Remember, you got to use that dot checked property. Don't just put the checkbox down. A checkbox has a lot of properties. So it's the dot check property of the checkbox. You want to see if it's true or false. If they're all true, then this dog has had quite a day. So I've got a message box popping up. Pause the video to make your own message box. And then let's run it and see if the, all the check boxes are selected as true. And we click the change the picture button. Will we get our message? Not with two of them. But with all four, there it is. A full dog day. Time to take a nap. Now you would need to use separate ifs if you're trying to maybe count how many of those are selected. If you're having a counter go through and do that. Check boxes have a check changed event also. So I'm going to take a look and see if the dot check property is true. And then I'll have some kind of message. So the dog's pretty excited about going for a ride as long as that ride does not end at the vet. And the message shows up. Now when I uncheck it, that is a check changed event, but I don't have anything for it being false, so nothing shows up. If you do want something to happen when it changes that way to false, you can make an else. So I'll have an else, and then I'll have another message pop up for the dog to say, so going from false to true, that's a check changed event. Going from true to false, that's a check changed event. But I have an if inside there that's evaluating whether the check property is true or false, and then a certain message comes up as a result. Radio buttons are great when you have no more than one thing that needs to be selected in a group box. If more than one thing can be selected, that's when you're looking at check boxes in a group box.